Thank you all very much. It's an absolute honor to be here. Thank you, Dale, for extending the uh, invitation. I am going to continue the conversation around design. If it's true that things are blowing up in, in, in a good way, um, then it's also true that there's going to be a lot of concern around um, codifying and efficiency. And you know, designers are fairly obsessed with things like repeatability and, and detail. And so I'm not going to talk about the money part of it. I'm, I'm going to share with you a little bit around design, design hacking, design education. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to, uh, I'm calling this, well, actually, uh, open season uh, as opposed to open hardware. I think it fairly is an open season going on right now. And the way that I want to structure it is around recipes and design, four recipes and design, which is the way I like to think about things as the ingredients and the recipes. And, uh, and the first thing that I have to do is put it on the black background because that's what designers do. Um, so uh, the first recipe is observations. And here I'm going to talk about the utter confusion in the commercial world. Um, and so this is something called first world problems. Uh, the first one and the last one are my favorite. This is a poster. The first one says, my hand is too fat to shove into the Pringles container, so I'm forced to tilt it. Uh, as if this were a real problem, right? And then the last one, my laptop is low on battery, but the charger is over there, right? <laughs> He says, this is fantastic, right? And anything fantastic is going to go on the internet, perhaps, and be voted up and down. So I like the top one of this one. This is at Reddit. I took two showers today, and my towel hadn't fully dried in time for the second shower. And so, and so you, know that, you just know that some asshole designer is out there designing the two-shower towel that we're going to find at Bed Bath & Beyond in a few weeks, as if that this were a good thing, right? Uh, this is something that an old student of mine sent me a few months ago because he knew that it would drive me uh, you know, out of my mind. And so this is uh, stacker mallows. So I'm Canadian and new to the whole s'mores thing. Uh, and, uh, and so the whole idea of s'mores is to take this spherical marshmallow and through heat is to compress it into the pancake, right? Like that's the point, right? So you get a company like Kraft here and some des you know, designers who take, who they basically destroy that whole ritual in, in the name of making it easier, better? I don't know. But they're, they're doing it with a straight face, and that really concerns me. This is, a, this is a restaurant in Victoria, British Columbia, and so the conceit here is that when you take food out, you, eat it, you get it in these Chinese food containers, but when you eat the food in the restaurant, you eat out of the Chinese food containers like they do on sitcoms, right? It's actually quite nice. I hadn't done it before. And it's on the West Coast, so they want you to recycle and clean up your garbage. But over here is a spot for metal, and on the right is a pair of pliers, right? <laughs> And so I'm pretty handy with a pair of pliers. I have to tell you, it is next to impossible to take apart one of these Chinese food containers. The gauge of the, of the steel, you have to like destroy the thing. And I'm thinking this is the stupidest sustainability you know, gesture I've ever seen in, in my entire life. But upon further thought, I'm actually thinking now that this is kind of brilliant. That if I want this experience, I pay that labor. This is really, really smart. And this is actually more and more the way that things need to go. Uh, many of you have seen this. Uh, it's worth, I'm hoping that the, that the uh, organizers will, will let me uh, not count this against me. I've got some sound here. It's really good with the sound. I'll come down here if you turn it up there.
Right, so I think it's, it's safe to say that the design world, when this thing came out, this video came out a couple months ago, like lost its shit. Uh, and probably many of you did as well. So these are the guys, the folks from Berg. They're brilliant, they are amazing, they do incredible work. And so people had, had thought that this really had cracked the code of this ephemeral kind of information and, and printing, and, and uh, I want one. And you probably want one too. And I think a couple of days later, people started to sober up a little bit and said, well, hold on, maybe this ephemeral information is ephemeral for a reason and actually doesn't need to be printed, but, but I really want one, right? <laughs> and then I started thinking, because I'm kind of obsessed about this stuff, that, you know, the thermal paper is covered in BPA, and so, like, that's a bad thing. And, but, you know, I'm not going to hold it against the, guy, the folks from Berg because, you know, when you compare the amount of, of thermal paper they're spending versus every restaurant or every single cash register in every single retail environment on planet Earth. This isn't a lot of BPA, and I didn't really know what to think, but I really, really wanted one, <laughs> right? And so, you know, I'm conflicted, and I think a lot of us in the design world are conflicted, and I think that, to, to sum this part up, to finding problems worth solving and solutions worth uh, admiring is at the very least problematic, but we need to think about things like the Pringles can and things like the, the marshmallows and exactly what it is we're putting out into the world. The second recipe is I'm calling Open Sesame, and this is design gestures in an educational world. So this is some uh, student work that I want to show you. I've been teaching for about 17 years. Uh, now And so we did a project around uh, prosthetics. This is John Cunningham. Some of you may know him. Uh, he launched this amazing place called the openprosthetics.org, which is where a lot of amputees and hackers and enthusiasts can come and, 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 and contribute uh, interesting hacks for making prosthetic arms um, and limbs better. Uh, and this was actually, and this is Amy Mullins, who's very popular in the design circles. And so this was inspired by the DARPA project and people fearing that it would result in, you know, essentially a million dollar arm with a big CPU and battery that you couldn't clean and no one could afford. And so we were looking really at STEAM and STEM uh, curricula ideas for this. And so I'm just going to show you two or three projects that were sort of off the beaten path a little bit. This is Celine Boucher, who did this cuff. Um, inspired by the fact that uh, lifelike prosthetic limbs are very expensive, like $10,000 expensive for painting on you know, veins and arteries and such, and that if she designed a piece of jewelry that would camouflage this, this poor looking arm, that it would be this really great thing, kind of a hack. And what was really nice is many of the women in the class actually wanted one of these bracelets. Marilyn Dantes went all the way with the bangle collection. She turned the whole arm into this piece of jewelry um, and really looked at it as fashion. And I understand, we all understand that this has functional limitations. You're not going to be able to eat with this arm. But you can look beautiful with this arm. Uh, it really, really matters. My favorite of all is uh, Tuber's Zotch. You know this toy? It's like wired, covered in foam, and you can bend it around. So Marianne Uchola just basically co-opted the brand uh, Tuber's and Zotch Interactive Arms. Um, and this is how it works. Right? And so again, this kid's not going to be able to eat SpaghettiOs with this arm, but this kid can play swords. Very, very important for a kid. Um, and uh, there's a few, few things that are really you know, amazing about this. One is that the, the work that a prosthetist does is really all about the fit between the stump um, and, and the socket. And it's custom, and it's sweaty, and it's chafy, and it's uncomfortable, and it takes a lot of time. And this you can wrap around any residual limb. And again, I know that there are some structural limitations. But only, like, you know, essentially a graphic design person would have come up with this, not knowing what you couldn't do. The other thing is, and sorry for the, for the photo, I envision this in the retail environment where it's like, mommy, mommy, I want the prosthetic arm, I want the interactive arm. And, it, and the mom has to say, I'm sorry, this isn't for you. You have two arms, right? It flips, it flips the privilege where, where the disenfranchised kid gets the cool toy, right? This is, this is the power of design because I have to remind you that she made nothing. Right? She did a graphic. She just totally like, took this, this existing product and hacked it. Uh, Jungmin Kim's project recently, just in the past fall, around uh, Fukushima and radiation. And so these are the radiation stickers. So it's like, oh, why don't these people move? It's like, well, they can't move. They live there. Right? There's radiation. And so you need to know where it is and what's you know, hot. And so this was her point of departure, and this is what she came up with. She reimagined the sticker. So this is not very much radiation, this is more, uh, and this is a lot. Not very much, more, and a lot. And so we didn't know if this was disrespectful, or if this was funny, or if this was brilliant. And this kind of design hacking, sort of messing at the edges, I think is really, really important. It's important for the discourse, um, but it's also important for the kinds of things that we're choosing to put out into the world that we make. 
Uh, and so my sum up here would be if rules are meant to be broken, we couldn't be living in a time more apt to be breaking them. And that making this kind of discursive, transgressive work is really, really important. Uh, the third recipe, open, wide, nurturing for a uh, moderate world, as Dale had, had, had asked me to say a few words. So this new MFA program launching in September, our first students uh, at the School of Visual Arts in New York City, called Products of Design, really a reimagining about industrial design in terms of systems and scale and, and environmental stewardship and old making like sewing and cooking and, and, and crochet and new making like digital fabrication. Um, and fully one third of, the, of the, the pedagogy here is around making up in the top, uh, top band here. Um, and this is the space that, that we did these custom desks, also really um, about permission to make. So we have these tiles that interchange. So here's Lego, there's Kyle. Like, I like to work on cutting map and not when I'm using a glue gun. Then I like masonite, some people like Corian, some people like wood. So these are all swappable and I have this romantic idea that in a few years future students can leave through these things and say, oh, I really love this uh, exacto slash marks on this tile. This is going to be my first tile um, and it will have belonged to a previous student. Here's, this is going to be my desk, so the prototype actually turns into my desk. This is what it looks like in real life, so I, I guess mission accomplished. Um, and then uh, we designed a lot of uh, the community uh, around food, the middle of the department, the whole department's built around this massive kitchen that students normally don't get, because I believe that food is this incredible making analog for design. You have the extraction and the raw materials, you have the tools, you have aesthetics, you have disposability, recycling, all of that's built into stuff that we naturally do. We just forget, um, and it's just sort of designed out of us, engineered out of us in convertible spaces. So here's a rendering of this thing. Um, and here it is uh, last week when we, when we first uh, had people move in. Uh, we do a summer program in France that actually looks like this. Um, also around very, very low tech making, eating outside, making hands, a return to the hand. We talk about design strategy and, and, and pedagogy, but we actually, you know, prototyping is absolutely like, you know, premier. It's like make anything. I was talking to a couple of folks yesterday. Make anything and react to it versus having a meeting with yourself or a meeting with other people. The power of the prototype is, is everything. You don't need to have a meeting. You don't need to talk. You just put something in somebody's hands. This audience probably knows that more than anybody. This is a product engineer at Apple who was there last summer, who was really interested in compression, so he built this 12-foot 12, uh, 12 smasher where you put things down the bottom. Very interesting personal projects there. Uh, and campfires. I'm actually looking for a few people if anyone's interested in coming to France this, uh, this summer and, and making stuff with us. Um, and so I look at, at the outputs of design or the products of design along you know, a lot of scales. They can be sets of instructions, social interventions, I showed you a couple, business models, crafts, hacks, mods, uh, ready-mades, one-of-a-kind, all of these different kinds of physical things. And I've shown you a lot of physical stuff, very visceral. Um, but there's also, I think, this, this vertical axis that, that we need to start talking about as a community, which I would call really sort of signature characteristics. Uh, products of design, products of extraction, ad, uh, aspiration, products of fame. If you hire a famous architect to design a building, you're hiring her because she's famous, not because you're going to get a good building. You're going to get a good building. She's famous. You are ordering a product of fame because you want to put your library or city on the, on the map, or there's, there's, there's some motivation. It's a different, it's a different uh, bargain. It's a different arrangement products of research, consumption, products of acquiescence. When did it become okay that we are not allowed to change the battery in our iPhone? How is that okay? Right? Yeah, sure. And, you know, Maker's Manifesto, if you can't open it, you don't own it. Um, but we like this magic box, and one of the reasons it's magic is because it's sealed, because we can't open it. Uh, delight, humility, going very, very fast here, courage products of appreciation. So if we compress this idea, we can see that this honeycomb is a product of nature, but it's also a product of teamwork. Uh, this is a product of posture. The first iPad uh, ad campaign did, never showed the face. It barely showed the screen, right? Everybody knew that, that this was going to be a remarkable product. Uh, it was the shape of the body and using the product that was unique. In fact, when Steve Jobs introduced it, he introduced it in this in the seated position on this very famous Corbu comfort chair and the Serenin table. Uh, one of the shames of our, of our civilization, products of recycling, often that this is grandmothers hunched over Bunsen burners, heating up PCBs and pulling off components. Um, and then this is a designer in London who got tired of having his bike stolen, um, so he turned the, the whole bike into a fucking bike lock, you know. Um, so uh, with a tension cable in the middle. So it's a product of resignation, I would say. 
And so this is a drum I've been beating for a while now. Designers think they're in the artifact business, but they're not. They're in the consequence business. And I think definitely this community at this moment needs to, needs to think about this. If you're going to scale, then you are not in the artifact little, little plaything business anymore. You are in the consequence business. And frankly, you want to be in the consequence business. That's, that's you want to have effect. You want to create change. Um, what's interesting is you have an advantage because makers and open source ecologies are progressive by definition since they engage in designing with instead of for. Um, a lot of designers design at, not even for. Uh, you, in just in, in how you work, are designing with. This is way, way ahead of the game. Uh, and the last recipe, very quickly, is literally a recipe. We had an open house for this program, uh, and um, we wanted to, we need to feed people, but we did not want to have some sort of box lunch that you threw out. Um, so uh, this is Bill Mogridge. So I was inspired by this guy at Union Square who does these sand mandalas. He wears these knee pads and every week he goes and this is how they end up. And then they just blow away or rain away and I thought well, what if we could have like a food mandala. And so Emily Balls did this sketch up here and, and it worked. You know the artist material, the, the raw materials uh, were, were made out of food. We probably didn't chop them quite, quite fine enough. Um, and you would pluck this pita from, from the sky. And, uh, and you would just assemble your, your, this person didn't really understand symmetry so much. <laughs> and, uh, and so then on the side of the room, we had this copy stand. So we had this, uh, this digital camera that would wirelessly send the images to the laptop, the laptop up to Flickr, Flickr back down to the laptop, and then out a projector. And so that these things would be projected, these designs, as people made them. Um, and it was this really, uh, this really lovely thing. And so here are some of the results. I really like this one. Again, didn't really understand the, the point there. Um, and this one, I didn't stage this, F plus. So like they weren't happy with, with the open house, or they didn't like the food, they weren't, they weren't very hungry, clearly. Um, but what I love about this whole thing is that it's high tech and that it's low tech. It's participatory, it's fun, it's funny. It's literally made out of food. There was no waste. You, you, you couldn't do it like poorly, like everybody could sort of make their own thing. And I think that, um, that these are great ingredients. And so that's my last thought for you today, is that open anything should have the following ingredients, which are participation, performance, uh, and some flavor. Thanks.